Hi there, it's Hal Feldman, Miami Hal. I am behind mask and I am lamenting the fact that I am. This is Mayor Joe Cordino. He's with Pinecrest and he's also in a mask. And unfortunately, we're doing our 14th episode. It's 14 already? Of a COVID update. Oh my God, we gotta stop meeting this way, Hal. Joe, our last update, which I didn't even count in the overall count, was us jumping into a pool as a celebratory sign that we had gotten past the heavy phase of COVID and we were going to be able to kind of glide our way out of this. Not so the case, right? No, we thought we were on easy street. We thought we had the vaccines. We thought we'd get into summer. It would get warm and we, this would be in the rear view mirror. Not the case right in front of us. Okay. So uh, as compactly as possible, I know people can get the, the, the general idea of what's going on. But what I find interesting first is that we don't have the detailed numbers we used to have. Yeah. And I'd like you to explain to me why. Why don't we know how many people are in a hospital, how many cases caused every day or, or discovered every day, et cetera? They're not publishing those numbers at this point in time. I think the State Department of Health, uh, to the best of my knowledge, is only allowed to talk about them, but they don't publish them. And those same numbers that we were getting on a daily basis last year don't exist. So it's uh, anecdotal reported by the hospitals and, and maybe we talk about it once a week at this point in time. But no, no hard data like we had leading up to this. They what? stopped that at about Memorial Day. Why? I think we all thought we were out of this and they dismantled the apparatus and uh, by the time it picked back up again in June, you know, here we sit. So we're two weeks, I guess we're into our second week of school. Right. And so, at least in my mind, and maybe you're going to tell me that, uh, that I'm correct, that is a big concern. That's a giant concern. Uh, the numbers have been escalating ever since early June. They, they hit about last week uh, higher than, the uh, number of cases today higher than we were uh, at our highest peak ever, which I believe was last summer or last January. Wait a minute, we have set a new record for yeah. COVID cases within the last week. Yeah, we were getting about 3,100 per day on average uh, over, the last, uh, over the last week of uh, August. And it's, it has started to tail out, but I think it was down from 31 to 3,000. So it's, it's still as high as it's ever been. So I guess if you wanted to look for some kind of silver lining, um, we have been through this. And so people generally know the right things to do. But we're, we're even knowing the right things to do, stay away from big crowds, wear masks, you know, get your, God forbid, get your vaccine. And still our numbers are higher because of this Delta variant. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And so the concern is that uh, we may be plateauing, right? It may get to 3,100 and and you know, go down to 3,000, 2,000, whatever. Obviously, a history shows that it takes us a couple of months to get back down. We're up at like 12% positivity rate, right? Ooh. The concern though is that people are going back to school and that's a whole new uh, situation we have to deal with. It, this it does impact children a lot more than, than say the other one did. And uh, so they have to wait until uh, you know, maybe the third, fourth week of school. So you see where their trajectory is. So again, just like they thought of last year, Labor Day is a holiday that everybody needs to be concerned with. The opening of school and just our behavior in general uh, has put this behind us. So for instance, uh, I'm going, <laughs> there's a professional conference, for instance. Uh, uh, anecdotally, I, I have a, a friend of mine who went to a professional conference with 15 people. Some of them were vaccinated and nine of them tested positive for COVID on, on, upon their return. And so it's, a, it's kind of a dangerous situation out there. It's certainly more dangerous for those that are unvaccinated, but there are still breakthrough cases that are putting the most vulnerable, old, older folks and immune compromised people in the hospital. But the deaths, we had 70, uh, what did I say, 30 deaths in June, 70 in July, 200 in August. So it's, it's up, it's, it's okay. here. So when this all started, Pinecrest scrambled and got some pretty good procedures in place. They had closed Village Hall for a while. They, you know, trained their police to interact with people differently, um, generally made some really good rules around how people get in and out of businesses and how the restaurants operated. Do you foresee anything changing with Pinecrest now that all the, those rules are essentially relaxed? Well, we, we reinstituted 
reinstituted the mask order in our community center. Um, we have gone to back to the virtual meetings where we can. The, last year, the governor allowed us to have fully virtual meetings. Now, uh, you have to have a quorum in City Hall when you're voting on things. So in those cases, we'll be semi-virtual. Uh, those, those council people that don't want to be there can stay home, and the public will have the ability to, commu to uh, give input Zoom. Uh, and any other meeting that we have now will be fully virtual un until until further notice, really. So l let's kind of wrap up this with, with what you know behind the scenes, because as you know, we do not have the numbers and the data that we had publicly available before. But I'm sure with the people that you interact with and the hospitals that you talk to, you, you have some data that may not be you know fully official that you can kind of share with us. What's yeah, going the on? Hospitals the hospitals were stretching capacities, right? There were There were, I think, um, the Baptist Hospital in their system had 700 people in the hospital a couple of weeks ago. Now it's down to 500. So those are okay. good signs. All right. uh, same with Jackson. Jackson was very high. I forget the number. Now there are a couple hundred less. So it's moving itself through the system. Uh, again, the problem is that there's not enough vaccinated people. The, the numbers, uh, you, you can't count on any of these numbers. They started talking about vaccination percentages and we always heard the number, you reach herd immunity at 70%, right. and we start to look at 75, 82%. What, where, where are these numbers coming from? We shouldn't be experiencing this disease. You started to look at an individual zip code, and you're starting to find some populations were 200% vaccinated and 175. So all the numbers are, those numbers are totally and unreliable. Recorded. Yeah, we have no idea what the actual vaccination rate is amongst the population. Those, there was a lot of vaccine tourism that took place. So people right, came to came Miami, into the country. took a shot. Yeah. They registered that as a, a, as a shot, but the base population never changed, right? So, you know, the county population of 2.7 million is what it is, but we had, it wasn't just us getting vaccinated. And then anecdotally, um, I, I had somebody in my uh, general family that might have been exposed and I had to take him for yet another test. We've done this do probably a dozen times at this point. And we went to Tropical Park. And I'm very familiar with that procedure because there's a company called Curative that had done all those tests and vaccinations up until yesterday. <laughs> oh. And I went there yesterday and there were very long lines. And all of a sudden I'm realizing it's not Curative, there's another company. Are you familiar with why, uh, as we have, the, the COVID helicopter go overhead. Uh, are you familiar why that why, why that change might have happened, or you, did you were you even aware? No, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why that change has happened. I know that there was some there's some issue at Tropical Park where uh, the local community is getting fed up with having a site there, and so they may be thinking about moving that. Okay. But I, I don't know. I think that's a county run or a state run site. So I'm, I'm not. Uh, All right. Let's talk uh, about community and testing sites. What, what does Pinecrest currently offer for testing? We still have the Milo care. I believe we still have that Milo care site. I think it's at Sunnyland Park and they keep going strong. I just looked at the website today. You know, they're actually, they're still giving the shots and uh, now the boosters are coming out for the immune compromised people. And I believe as of October 1st, um, you know, everybody else can get in line, they, they are recommending eight months after your second shot, go get the booster. So that's available. And I think that's gonna be critical to getting us through because this is a vaccinated, unvaccinated issue and the variants are out there. We need the boosters to protect ourselves. Anything else we should know, Joe? Tell, tell our audience what they should know about this unfortunate turn. It's as bad as it was last year. It's primarily impacting the unvaccinated people but it is crossing over to the rest of us who have been vaccinated and we know what to do. Pinecrest has behaved impeccably through this whole thing. Uh, we, got our we got our shots, we wore our masks, we, we behaved ourselves in, in, our, in the stores and we just need to keep doing what we're doing and weather this storm and, and it's a shame that it's not over and um, it's hard to stay positive, but that's exactly what we have to do in this situation. Can't give it up now. We just gotta keep, keep it on. You don't want this disease. Agreed. Um, Obviously, we're going to recommend that you go out and get vaccinated. If you're not, we're going to recommend masks, correct? Absolutely. Just and everything we were doing last year at this time, keep doing it. Yeah. And I know it's hot out, but, you know, yep. and stay calm it. and carry on. Right. That's exactly right. We've um, done it before. We're Joe, going into our third year. Oh, God. Geez. Joe, thanks for thanks for this wrap the up. Pleasure. Uh, if we need to do another one, we will. But in the meantime, Joe and I are working on an opportunity. We're not sure exactly when and 
and where just yet, but we're going to talk about some very positive things that are happening here in Pinecrest, particularly with the water system. Oh yeah, we got yep. great great things going on in Pinecrest with our with our water system. And we're going to get an update about the partnership between Pinecrest and FPL and burying some power lines and making the power grid that much stronger here in Pinecrest, right? A lot of the infrastructure pr problems that we have had over the 25 years of Pinecrest are now being solved in a significant way. So we're very excited about that. I, I love that. And as I'm a hoping, I'm hoping that the next time, let's, let's hope uh, the next time there's a storm that, that just hit New Orleans, that we're going to fare much better off than the last time that we had a storm. But these things are, the, the, these events are very positive for us. So I'm looking forward to talking to you about it. Agreed. The very accessible mayor of Pinecrest, Joe Cordino, Hal Feldman, that's our COVID update. And again, hope you don't have to do another one. But until then, Joe, what's your phone number? How do they get in touch yeah, with you? Yeah, anybody that questions? needs to contact me, uh, Joe Cordino, Mayor of Pinecrest, 305-606-2364. And um, we're, here, we're here to help. We're from the government, and we're here to help. The whole council is here. The, our group is fantastic. Contact any one of us or our staff, and uh, we can help you get through your issue. All right. Have a great day.